Uh, news coming in today here about uh, divorce rates in the United States. Um, it, it's always been, I've always had that mindset, and the line gets thrown around all the time, half of all marriages end in divorce. Um, well, some say that, that that statistic is a myth. But one thing about big data now, with all the data points, we can we can get a better picture about uh, what kind of folks stay together and what kind of folks don't based on a lot of other factors, including occupation. The, the highest divorce rate occupations in the U.S. and the lowest, and this is across a group of 500 different occupations. So when you look at this aggregate data, where are the numbers big and, and where are they low? Where are people hanging together and where are they not? Let's talk to board-certified psychiatrist and owner of Four Stones Collaborative Group, Dr. David Henderson, on the other end of my line right now. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I appreciate you being here. Where do psychiatrists fit into that list? Where do you... <laughs> <laughs> that is always the question that gets asked. And I, my, it's interesting when you look at the, uh, the data points, doctors uh, and surgeons are on the lower end of okay. the divorce rate, which used to be, it used to be believed that we had some of the highest divorce rates. Now, if you go in and you look at different professions within the medical field, different doctors do vary in terms of divorce. And, and honestly, psychiatrists are higher on that list. But I do have a theory about that. And my theory is, can you imagine being married to someone who is right all the time in their assessment of <laughs> conflict and your personality? And most people just can't stand that. So and that's that's my theory is I'm going to I'm going to. You know, take that to the bank, that I'm always right as a psychiatrist and in relationships, nobody likes to be with somebody like that. But well, I, but no, in that's all seriousness, a, that, that's, in there's, all there's seriousness. a case of physician, <laughs> physician heal thyself um, and, and look exactly, inward. You know what you exactly. say about doctors, though? Here, I'll extrapolate an opinion on this. Tell me if I'm crazy. Is it back in the days of alimony and, and divorce, um, you know, there could be some long-term payoff to marrying a doctor or a surgeon and getting divorced and still, you know, being able to hitch onto that train for a while. Now, I mean, it's a different society. When you divorce, you, you break things apart. But depending on how long you've been in the game together, it can be very different from early on to, to later. Uh, and that may have more incentive for people to try to stick together a little bit. I think that's true. And honestly, I really think in terms of professions, you have to look at two issues, and these are age-old issues. One is the stability within yourself. So we talk about emotions and psychology and your mental health and, and the commitment that you have relationally. It's also important uh, circumstantially in terms of outward, the outward environment and the stability around you. And what bears out in this study is when you look at some of the professions with the highest divorce rate and the lowest divorce rate, you see a lot of instability uh, among the profession or among the job. So, for example, in the highest divorce rate category are bartenders, which intuitively makes a little bit of sense in, sure. in, in regard to their working long hours, late nights. They're away from the family. They're exposed to a party atmosphere where there's a lot of drinking, potentially drugs involved. Uh, and and it's just it, it's an in, unstable environment. So uh, it's not super conducive for long term relationships. Whereas if you look at the other end of the spectrum, uh, you see a lot of scientists uh, and and scientists who have a, a strong sense of commitment. You have to work really hard to get educationally to where you are. And then some of these jobs are are stressful. Uh, the people that stay in it have a strong sense of commitment, and that probably carries over some to their relationships yeah, was, as well. Yeah, I was going to carry that thought line. You just did it there, the idea of you know, jobs that are inherently kind of bouncy and unstable, that there might be a carryover to personal relationships. It doesn't have to be, but there might, and it, and it might be enough to skew some numbers in that direction, and just the opposite for jobs that are considered kind of bedrock and stable, and that there could be, you know, a, a, a foundational stability in the personal relationship as well. So it, that, that wouldn't seem too off base, would it? No, and I, I think that is the reality is, and, and again, it's, it's both in terms of personality and, and, and motivation, what draws you to your particular profession, and are there attributes that really affect 
your personal relationships. There are some folks here who have to be pretty emotionally stable in order to manage the stress level. So, um, you know, physicians, for example, you know, there is potentially a reason why they're on the lower end of the list. Scientists who, um, you know, maybe delve into more of the analytical side and not as much the emotional component. So there may be some aspects to that. Um, but I also do believe that the job itself, the hours, the workload, and the studies that bore out that pay is an important factor in terms of stability. So lower-paying jobs tend to correlate with higher divorce rates. And again, it, I think it really all boils down to the level of stress uh, and stability coupled with the attitude toward marriage in general and what your commitment level is. And, and that's a key factor for people, I think, who are listening to recognize this isn't really about what you do for a living. It's about who you are as a person and are you working on yourself. We are very career-driven in our society, but you also have to be very relationally driven as well in order to make marriage success. Do you think any of this was, you know, if you did a further breakdown, you'd see a big difference or things align in terms of the gender male, female? Of course, now we have, um, we have, we have same-sex marriage in the United States, and it's probably very early for data points on that. But would you think that things would fall in line between the genders or there could be some real differences even in specific occupations for divorce rate? Well, I think I think in terms of gender, you may see some breakdown. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer in just you know, in terms of development. Women tend to be more emotionally intelligent earlier on in their development, and there may be some factors associated with that. But again, I think I think the key issue here is the stability of the person themselves, and that's why I encourage people to engage in their own therapy before going into a committed marriage relationship. Because let's face it, if you're not taking care of your issues, the, the, the baggage, good and bad, that you bring into a marriage relationship, then it's not going to be as successful as it could be. So whether you're male, female, in a same-sex relationship or a heterosexual relationship, it really matters more the nature of your heart, your fortitude, and, and your willpower and, to engage in the tough times. And then you have to be upfront about that with your significant other, or you've got another problem. Absolutely. And those who are able to communicate both their circumstances and their emotions, studies have shown that they are the most successful in long-term relationships. And that's, that is key. Treat talk therapy like you would going to a personal trainer at the gym use it as a tool to, uh, you know, enhance those things about yeah. yourself. And I guarantee you, you'll see success outside in your relationships, both in marriage, business, and, and friendships as well. Occupations with the highest and lowest divorce rates in the United States. Our guest, Dr. David Henderson, board-certified psychiatrist, owner of Four Stones Collaborative Group. Um, website where people can find you, Doc? The website is fourstonesgroup.com. That's all spelled out, fourstonesgroup.com. Dr. David Henderson, our guest, appreciate having you on very much. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.